Hey everybody, it is Mr. George and what we're going to do next is we are going to look at the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you do have your student book, your student binder, this is actually on page 66. So I'm just going to read the, the narrative along the top. I'm going to read the passage and then we're going to do a line by line analysis of what it actually means. Uh, okay, so the Pledge of Allegiance is something that is said in every public school in the United States um, to begin each day, each school day. The Pledge of Allegiance was written in August 1892 by the socialist minister Francis Bellamy, who lived between 1855 and 1931. It was originally published in the Youth's Companion on September 8, 1892. Bellamy had hoped that the pledge would be used by citizens in any country. In its original form, it read, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And so over the next, you know, 50 or so years, we've seen the uh, Pledge of Allegiance change over time. It's evolved. So in 1923, the words, the flag of the United States of America were added. At this time, it read, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In 1954, in response to the communist threat of the times, President Eisenhower encouraged Congress to add the words, under God, creating the 31-word pledge we say today. Bellamy's daughter, objected to this alteration. Today it reads, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Pledge of Allegiance should be performed by standing at attention facing the flag with their right hand over the heart. When not in uniform, people should remove any non-religious headdress with their right hand and hold it at their left shoulder, the hand being over the heart. Persons in uniform should remain silent, face the flag, and render the military salute. So this is the Pledge of Allegiance line by line. So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to uh, try in, in your own words, tell me what each line means. So you can pause the video and then after you're done, you can continue playing the video and then I'm going to do an analysis line by line. So see if you can do each of the lines or some of the lines or even one of the lines um, after you pause the video and then you can continue with the video and then you'll hear me going line by line you know trying to explain what these words mean in different words so pause the video now All right, great. So hopefully you were able to uh, come up with translation or what these lines mean. So when we say, I pledge allegiance, what we're really saying is, you know, someone is individually speaking, one person, and you're promising to be loyal. Okay? You're promising to be, to be loyal to the flag of the United States of America. So the flag is a symbol okay it's a symbol of our country okay that's what the flag is flag is a symbol uh, it's a symbol and a symbol is something that means something 
So when we look at our flag, it not just means the United States of America, but it also people think of freedom and liberty and equality and to the republic. So what this means is a republic is a form of democracy. Republic is a form of democracy. So where we have in a, in a republic, people vote for people who then represent them and create laws on behalf of them. So for example, as a citizen, I do not create laws in our country. I vote for people who then represent me in Congress who can then create laws on on behalf of the citizens. Okay. For which it stands. So the it is a pronoun that really represents the flag. Okay. So for which the flag stands. So just looking at the first four lines again. You know, I pledge allegiance, I promise to be loyal to the flag of the United States of America. So I promise to be loyal to the flag, which is a symbol of the United States. The United States are, are lots of individual states that, that join together to form one, one country. And to the Republic for our democracy, for which the flag stands or represents one nation. So from these, from these individual states, we have one single united country under God. So when this was implemented in 1954, it was put in as under the Christian God because most people in the United States were Christian at that time, which was very unifying. So when people say it today, you can refer to it as your Christian God. And I'm sure some people that aren't Christian who say it can, can look at it as their God or like their personal deity. It's a way that it can be interpreted, I guess, any way that you want to. But clearly in 1954, it was in response to communism. Uh, therefore, it, it, it was the, the intention uh, appears to be the Christian God. Indivisible. That means that you can't split it up into individual parts. So one nation under God can't be split up. And then the last line with liberty and justice for all. So this, this last line refers to that, that everyone should be treated equal. There should be fairness. There should be freedom for each individual person in the United States. Not just a group, but for everyone. Everyone. So I hope you found the Pledge of Allegiance, the history, the actual pledge, in the analysis of this and again any times we have words people can interpret words differently um, that's just one interpretation that that you receive today so thanks for watching